around the country. Uh, thank you so much, uh, you dealers, uh, contractors, engineers, uh, sales rep, for taking your time, taking your precious time, actually, um, for the next uh, two plus hours to listen to me. Okay, let's start. Uh, I will be having two segments, <coughs> two segments, two sessions. Uh, one would be the residential uh, single zones, and then the next would be the residential uh, multi zones. So, if you have any questions uh, as we go, as we browse through slides and slides and slides, uh, please let me know. Uh, you can write it down and let me know. Uh, we will have uh, enough time uh, for questions and answers. And if I don't have an answer for you, I will definitely get it through. Uh, to Fallon and her team. Okay, so let's start. Uh, Panasonic's uh, Panasonic lineup. Uh, we have the single zone, uh, which ends with a WKUA. This is our new model that we started last year or earlier, in, uh, late in 2019, early 2020, and it's a pop our very popular model. Uh, with the Nano X technology, we'll speak about it in the next few slides. Uh, this this model now has been approved. The indoor units have been approved to work with our three zone, our three zone multi zone units. Our our multi zone units we have two zone, three zone, four and five, but the WKUA for now has been approved only for three zones. So you can use the WKUA with the three zones. As for the rest, indoor units, you can use on all two, three, four, and five. We we'll talk about this later. Then we have the the same uh, E series, exterior E series, single zone as well. And you can, uh, and as I said earlier, you can also use them on our multi zone. Then we have the RE series, RE series, which we call them the Pro series. Which, he, which some contractors call them the builder series, very popular as well. So we have wall mounted, uh, ducted, and cassettes in both residential uh, single zone as well as multi zone. You can use them in both ways. You can use them in single zones, nine up to 36, and then you can use them uh, with our multi zone as well. So, so the features, the WKUA, which is our latest uh, model, uh, WKUA, they have built-in Nano X technology, built-in Wi-Fi. You can use the wireless remote control. And if your client is asking for a wide, well and good, you can use that as well. We'll talk about little, we'll talk little, uh, little, little bit about our Nano X technology in the next few slides and about the built-in Wi-Fi. Then comes the E-series, okay? Our E-series that ends with an RKUA. Those, those models, they have a built-in Econavi sensor. They have a built-in Econavi sensor. And obviously, if somebody is asking, can we have a Wi-Fi? Say, yes, we can with an optional Wi-Fi that we use from a product called, uh, from a brand called Intersys. Easy error code retriever. I put it in our feature because honestly, it's so super easy. You can speak with your homeowner, a customer, and ask them to retrieve your the error code so that way you can be you can be well prepared to go and fix any issues arising. Auxiliary heater. Auxiliary heater is like backup heating when your heat pump cannot keep up, especially in cold areas. Okay, when it, when your heat pump cannot keep up, then uh, you can have baseboard heater, you can have hot water coil, you can have any kind of uh, secondary heat. And this indoor unit of ours, the WKUA, as well as the SKUA and, and the ducted units, they have an option to hook up a spot for your auxiliary heating. So the Nano X technology, our latest unit, uh, very popular takes care of pollen, odors, mold, bacteria, viruses. I had training a while back with our Canadian uh, um, contractors, and one guy had had come up and, and told us about uh, the odors. He said, I've got two smelly dogs, and of late, I'm not, getting, I'm not getting this smell. 
he was worried like maybe he got COVID and stuff like that, but no, he had no COVID. The, the thing is that this unit was getting rid of all the smell of his dog. So this is from the customer's uh, review, not mine, okay? So it shows that our system does work and, and it does work really, really well. NOx technology brings natural cleaning properties, hydroxyl radicals to the indoor environment, okay? So just keep in mind, this keeps your room really, really fresh when you turn it on. You have to turn on the Nano X mode. You have to put the unit in Nano X mode. This is a, this is a, 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 a very brief explanation about what this Nano X technology uh, does for our indoor units. Remember Panasonic uh, 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 released a Nano X or Nano G technology uh, some time back uh, with our air purifiers. That technology has been uh, improved, improvised, and now we have this uh, in our indoor units. It takes care of all pollutants, bacteria, viruses, and keeps your room fresh. The indoor unit has been redesigned, okay, guys? If you look at our, our older indoor units, the top here, the intake, where the air circulation, where the intake air comes in, was a little bit broader. Now they have reduced it with same energy efficiency. Smaller area, but maintain the same energy efficiency. We have a vein there. You see our vein? We have a vertical vein as well as the horizontal vein, which moves from left to right, and the vertical, which moves up and down. So you have two controls if you want to. All our compressors, single zone, multi zones, all our compressors are driven by a microprocessor. Uh, it's a chip that is embedded in that PCB that talks to all sensors, indoor sensors, outdoor sensors. They talk and based on, on what information that EEPROM is getting, that microprocessor chip is getting, it works accordingly. So in this case, I'm making a very simple, a very simple sketch, a very simple uh, uh, explanation to make you understand what this is all about. So in this case, we have, we have only two people. So when there is two people, obviously less load. And when there is less load, the sensor is telling the compressor outside or the microprocessor, that is, there's, there's no much load needed here. There's, there's very little load. So there's no much cooling or, heated, or heating needed. So just run based on what is needed. And, and that way you are saving and ed energy, your hydro bills are not skyrocketing for no reason. You know, like a central AC, when you turn it on, it runs like crazy. This will run smoothly and based on, on your load. So as, as you can see, the compressor is moving, but very slowly. But see what happens next. Load has increased. More people have walked in, they're having a meeting or whatever, and the compressor, the sensors have sensed that, the sensors have sensed that, wow, there's, there's, there's heavy load now. Then he's, that sensor sends signal to the outer unit, to the microprocessor, to ramp it up. And that's all about inverter technology in a, in a very simple term, in a very simple te uh, terminology. Okay? You don't have to go, uh, get too complicated. You don't have to get too uh, excited about what is this all about. It's something very simple, uh, uh, something, something a little bit so sophisticated, and it works super well and super great. Here you'll see something called an electronic expansion valve. Some people call it linear ex expansion valve, LED. Some guys call it electronic expansion valve. It's the same thing. It works based on pulses. As you can see, one to six. All these, all these six wires, they send pulses back to the back to the microprocessor depending on what the pulses are, are receiving from the sensors the sensors are telling the sensors are telling the microprocessor i need more refrigerant or i need less refrigerant depending on that this is these six wires send signal back to the board open me more or open me less now in this case here you will see how they switch between north pole to south pole it's all magnetism taking place here. 
and as you can see it starts with very little opening okay these are the internal compo components there is a guide then you will see a shaft and then you will see a plastic rotor guys this plastic rotor you got to be very careful especially when you're replacing this valve body when you're replacing this valve body sometimes people forget to insulate this with wet cloth or sometimes the cloth is not wet enough so when you are swaging this and then you are brazing this this plastic uh, rotor melts inside or gets stuck from, from, from the heat of your of your torch and then guess what this thing does not function well you have the same problem now you're so frustrated and you think that replacing the the valve body was not the solution but actually the problem was that this thing got melted so please keep that in mind okay then we have the valve pin that moves up and down the valve body and those are the pipes valve chamber the stopper so guys now you will watch when the electronic expansion valve is opening gradually it's it's opening very little right now you can see the flow of refrigerant is so slow so slow because the compressor is hardly running as you can see as you can see now it's starting to open slowly and slowly this this position i would say it's the position when the room is almost satisfied when the room is almost satisfied the compressor will hardly run probably two to three amps depending on which model you're working on mostly most common you uh, models are 12,000 btu so it will probably run around two amps and this is the flow of the refrigerant very slow because the the sensors have told the microprocessor i don't need much and uh food i don't need much juice i don't need much refrigerant so it's slightly opening then there is more demand as you can see the refrigerant is starting to move faster okay we are in cool mode right now that's why we what that's why you see blue okay so in cool mode as you can see it's moving a bit faster now because there is more demand the, the load has increased in the room and faster and faster now we are at maximum and at this at this state or at this stage we are expecting we are expecting the compressor is probably running at around six to seven amps if it was a 12,000 BTU unit. So I gave you a, 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 a very basic, a very basic understanding of how this, uh, this uh, electronic expansion valve works. So you have an idea of what happens when you don't have enough of flow, when you have less flow, or when the system is going into pump down. You're, you're turning on the unit, and the unit is going into pump down. Your valves are fully open, but you don't understand what happened. Chances are this guy here is clogged. So just keep that in mind, okay? So inverter technology. Inverter technology is just one complete PCB at the outdoor unit that you, you have the incoming power coming here, goes into a rectifier circuit, rectifier circuit changes from AC to DC, and then it goes through the IPM module, where three phase AC is generated. That's all about an inverter technology, an inverter PCB, in a nutshell, in a simple term. All it does, it changes from, from AC to DC, DC to AC, and AC that comes out over here is three phase. And that's and that's what's what's running your compressor. Our compressors, residential, light commercial, commercial, you name them, all inverter compressors are three phase driven okay guys so when you measure between u and v v and w w and u there is a balanced voltage there and if you're not getting a balanced voltage definitely this pcb is defective and if you're getting a balanced voltage over there and the compressor is not coming on but the fan is running the outdoor fan is running definitely you have a defective compressor So guys, we were talking about the micro microprocessor. 
that's where it is there that's where that's where everything happens all the information is gathered over there from different different components like sensors and you name that it gets all the information from there and that's what tells the compressor to go on to run higher lower you name it and if that goes bad we have these kind of errors f99 f96 f93 and f90 those four errors are related to that chip the moment you get these four errors try and reset the power for 10 to 15 minutes not three minutes not four minutes and not even six minutes 10 to 15 minutes we want everything here all the components here high voltage uh, capacitors to completely discharge and then start fresh if it runs in most cases it has ran but if it does not run replace that pcb don't even waste your time so in my early slides i mentioned that the nano x technology does not have the econavi sensor they have removed that and but the existing e series the 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 exteriors e series that ends with an r k u a does have this human activity sensor which we call it the econavi sensor when you turn that on the system works at a very reasonable rate saves you a lot of energy especially when it's running and there is nobody in the room so what happens when there is nobody in the room if you are running it in heating it will go two degrees lower and shut down and if you are in cooling it will go two degrees higher and shut down as soon as you walk in it will come back to where you set the temperature where, where you set your remote controller at so that is a good feature for the e-series that, that ends with an r k u a it covers good good distance there 21 feet 120 degrees so you have enough of room to cover wherever you are even if you are sitting in a corner it's a good feature especially i tell my guys it's a very good feature if you have this model and when you want to go to bed just leave it just leave it at econavi mode the econavi mode will drop two degrees only you don't have to drop two to uh, more than two degrees because a heat pump is not like a furnace a heat pump takes a bit longer to get to its set point so you don't want to set back four six degrees when you go to bed unless it's okay with you when you wake up and the room is nice and cold <laughs> and, and 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 for you it's okay but for 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 comfort for comfort uh, for comfortability and comfort basis i would strongly advise you to use econavi you don't have to worry it drops on its own two degrees and when it sees you in the morning you get down you, you get up you do your stuff it it ramps up again the two degrees i was talking to you about that's that's the explanation over there okay it sees it sees activity it it targets the set point it sees no activity it drops down two degrees in cooling uh, sorry in heating and two degrees higher in cooling okay let's talk about auto auto mode auto mode is where when you set the system in auto mode it shifts between cooling and heating cooling and heating to me i'm not a big fan of auto mode because to me i feel like it's a, it's a waste of energy but if you want to use it if your customer want to use that no problem you can use it the only bad thing about it you will be heating one time and then you will be cooling another time in a single day okay so auto mode in in my experience i've seen it uh, used uh, a lot a lot in offices in office buildings where where it's cold in the morning and then it gets hotter in the evening and 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 each and every uh, office uh, personnel or person uh, does not have access to the remote controller so the building a facility guy or, or person uh, we'll set it up in auto mode and that's where i have seen a lot but in home 
very rare. But again, if your customer needs it, you can use it. Somebody, somebody has a question? Anyone has a question, guys? I can hear people talking. I apologize. That was my fault. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All closed now. <laughs> that's, okay, that's okay. That's okay, man. So in, in auto mode, fan cannot be adjusted, okay? The unit controls set temperature and fan speed according to the intake temperature. Where is the intake temperature? It's at the top of the unit. Intake temperature and, and pipe temperature uh, sensors are all working hard to get you the best fan speed possible. So depending on the coil temperature, the fan is regulated either high or low. When you, when you try and change it, you cannot change it unless you go to manual mode. So keep in mind, in auto mode, you don't have uh, much uh, to work on. No features, uh, no much features available in auto mode. With auto, with auto up and down swing control, so the swing as well has the auto mode, okay guys? So when you have that in auto, during startup control, the up, up and down vein is, is, is adjusted as, as you can see on my slide over there. It's, it's facing down. That is in cool mode, guys. Auto swing, vein will not swing up and down when used in auto, as you can see there. All this information, guys, all this information, you will find it in your user manual. When you buy our unit, when you open up the Indo unit, you will see an e a user manual and an installation manual. All that is available in our user manual. That user manual, you have to hand over to the homeowner. Tell that homeowner to read it because there are things that they may call you for for no reason. They will call you for no reason. They will think the unit is not performing. But if you read the manual, you will understand that the unit is performing. It's doing the way it's supposed to do. It's just that we do not read our user manual. So please insist as a contractor, as a dealer, as a sales rep, please insist the homeowner to read that user manual before making phone calls before calling you to the job site when there is no problem whatsoever. As I mentioned earlier, there is room and there is a spot to plug in a wired remote controller. So some places, like we have a big building right now that, uh, uh, that's going on, uh, installation is going on, 700 units are going in, and then we hope to get seven other buildings. Uh, at the moment, they are using a wired remote controller. I have no idea why, but they're using wired remote controller and they've, they have hooked up uh, with our Indo units. So all our Indo units have uh, th that feature where you can put a wired remote controller and it works the same. It works the same. And it's supplied with at least 21, uh, 21 uh, sorry, 32 feet uh, of, of a cable inside to plug in on either end. If, if for whatever reason, 32 feet is not enough, you can always extend it. Extend it with a, with a screen wire, 22 gauge or 24 gauge, and, and, and take it wherever you want to take it. Don't go too far. Try and be in that same room that you're controlling. OK. This wired remote controller, just like the wire, wireless, it has the weekly timer, uh, basic control, temperature, air swing, fan, fan speed, error code, and you name it. It has all what you need and more than what you need to run a unit. Okay, guys? Now let's talk a little bit of installation. Uh, I, I don't like to talk a lot on installation because I know you guys are very, very, very experienced with installation, installing these units. Uh, but there are a few things. I would like to talk about just to remind you in case in case you had forgotten or in case you you did not know okay guys so 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 i, I will give you a few tips few tips uh, what i've seen 
when I when I used to be in the service department, I worked for for various companies in the service department as well, and I I was the guy going to, to troubleshoot, and in most cases I found it was caused by our installers. And again, not all installers had the problem, but some, and and some was due to the location and stuff like that. So we'll talk about it. This not much, but I will remind a few things. Obviously, guys, keep in mind, never oversize or undersize a unit, please. Unless the homeowner is insisting, I like heat, I like overcooling, and I like overheating. Then you can you can decide whether you want to oversize it or it's up to you really. But oversizing is not good because sometimes when you oversize the unit, I mean not sometimes, in most in most cases, you're going to kill that compressor. You will kill that compressor before its lifetime, before its lifespan. Okay? So please remember you need to do a proper load calculation. Then based on your load calculation, you decide on the capacity. After after the capacity, you know, 12,000, 15,000, 17,000, 19,000 BTU, then go with what kind of model? Go what kind of model you need? You need a wall mounted, you need a cassette, you need a ducted, you know, decide on that. Location. Location is so important, guys. You decide based on your experience, the location. Try and avoid installing above windows and above doors. Unless the unless the homeowner is insisting then make sure that homeowner signs your document because if if you install above a window and you're doing cooling summertime obviously that window will get so hot condensation will start dripping and 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 then the homeowner forgot that he or she told you to put it there now she or he is telling you to get it, to get it out from there at your cost So, so some of you guys, if not all, know what I'm talking about. Fixing of the plate. Fixing of the plate is very, very important, guys. If this plate is not fixed properly, that blower wheel will not last for long. The motor is going to is going to start screeching, and in less than nine months, you will keep you will keep replacing the, that uh, fan motor because that back plate was not fixed flash to the drywall or flash to the wall and sometimes you may have put enough of screws but the problem is you don't have a square or a flash drywall so in that case please make sure you have a nice good smooth drywall how do you need installation how do you need location all that you have to keep that in mind guys gas leak vacuuming you know power cable make sure you pay attention to all that it's so important. I went to this job site that I, was, I just mentioned to you about. The electrician didn't know. So you see, when you're working with electricians, they don't care or they don't know. It's not that they don't care. They don't know that the control wire, okay? When I say the control wire, I'm talking about this one, two, one, two, and three. I'll show you in my next few slides. The, the communication wire between indoor and outdoor. They don't know that, that those three wires and ground you cannot break them. You cannot cut and join them. You're not allowed to do that. The moment you do that, you have problems. You may not have problems that day, but after a few days or so, you will have communication error. So please keep in mind that those three wires and ground should never be joined, should never be cut and joined. If you should have a straight wire from the outdoor to the indoor. Sorry, let, let me talk about uh, the space. 65 millimeter, which is around four inch, uh, less than four inches. Please keep that in mind. You need to have enough of room, okay? Please keep that in mind. You need to have enough of room over there. And if you have a side wall and your unit is all the way to the side, that's dangerous. Why it's dangerous? It's because all that hot air, I'm talking about in heat mode, okay? All that hot air that comes up there, it's gonna hang around. It's going to hang around there and put the unit to sleep. Then the homeowner calls you and tells you, hey, John, hey, William, hey, Lawrence, how come my unit is not working? 
How come my unit is not working? So please keep that in mind. Please keep that in mind that these walls over here at the top and at the side, if you can keep enough of room for air circulation, that would be great. Okay, let's move on. I spoke about the back plate. The back plate needs to be needs enough of officials, needs enough of plugs and screws. Okay, the ones that come with the unit is not enough. Add more. If I were you, I would put at least 10. Make sure it's nice and strong. The unit is nice and firm, no vibration, no rattling whatsoever. So put enough of screws. Put enough of fishes. I always put about 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Maybe 11, 12. You know, the more the better. The more the merrier, they say. So please, fix them. Fix them well. Make sure it's firm. Make sure there's no rattling, no, no screeching whatsoever. How do you need? How do you need? Always remember to keep room over here. Service area. You need to keep a lot of room here. You need to keep a lot of room at the back, okay, for air circulation, okay, guys? And if you're in a, in a cold area where there's lots of snow, depending on your area code, like in, in Canada, some, some provinces have 12, 12 inches above the ground. Those areas get little snow. And then there is places like Quebec, uh, Montreal, 24 inches above the ground because they get a lot of snow. And then we go to Seattle, uh, Vancouver, those areas, they don't need much. Six inches above the ground is more than enough because they hardly get snow. Sometimes they don't get, they don't get snow at all. So it all depends on what your code is calling for, guys. Your, your installation code, what is calling for. The more the snow, the higher the, the unit you raise it. And please, please keep this in mind, guys. Based on my experience, above 12,000 units, do not install on a wall. You will hear it right inside. It transfers to the wall, the copper pipes, you name it. Please mount it on a stand. Please mount these units on a stand. In cool mode, they don't ramp up that much. They don't make much noise because they run probably half the running amps, and that compressor is hardly running. But in heat mode, these units, they run like crazy. The fan runs like crazy, double noise, double the sound. So please avoid installing them on a wall. Concrete wall may help, but on a smaller unit, on a, on a bigger unit, it will transfer. I have seen it and I visited sites, bigger units, even on a concrete wall or a con concrete foundation, the sound, the noise will transfer to the indoor unit. So please keep that in mind. Remember, guys, when you're putting up, when you're making up a hole, make sure you are keeping it at a slant. Slant it so that you have enough of drain, room for your drain to flow out, condensate. Keep the pipe last. When you're running the pipes out, the drain pipe is at the very bottom. The liquid and the suction and the wire is on the, on the top. At the very bottom is your drain. Don't keep your drain on top, please. I, am, I know you know that, but I'm just reminding you. You see this, this slide here, this picture here, the guy put a split, uh, spirit level. That level is so important. That outdoor unit needs to be on a level. If that outdoor unit is not on a level, compressor oil will struggle to come back to the compressor. And you will lose a compressor simply because of that mistake. So please keep in mind, keep that outdoor unit square and fair and square. Keep that super level, number one. Number two, no P-traps, no intentional traps, because these intentional traps are just giving the compressor hard time to get its oil back. Oil travels all the way to the inner unit, and it's supposed to come back. And if you cause intentional traps, those intentional traps will have you suffer. 
You will keep replacing outdoor units. You will keep replacing compressors. And I'm talking, just remember this. I am talking based on field experience. I'm not talking based on these books. I'm talking based on field experience. I go to job sites almost every week. Even during this pandemic, I have been going to job sites. So please keep in mind that what I'm talking here is firsthand. Nothing much of the books, more from the field. Pipes. Don't use pipes that are in your truck that are fully open. A lot of moisture went in, a lot of dust went in, a lot of crap went in. And if you have no choice, then please make sure you flush them with whatever you are approved to use. Over here, we use R11. We are still, they, see, they still sell R11. And then they still sell, sell a flushing kit as well. And they, they, they also use uh, nitrogen. So use nitrogen use the flushing kit if for whatever reason that pipe was left open just last week just last week i had a problem on a multi-zone the guy called me and said that paul out of these two units one unit is dumping a lot of heat but the other unit is not working fine and he's telling me his piping is perfect and i'm not at a job site i'm talking with him on the phone it was a saturday this past Saturday. So I told him, well, if you're telling me your pipe is good, then pump down the system. Pump down the system, disconnect that unit that you think is bad, and connect it to another zone. Instead of using zone A, use zone C. But before you do that, just do me a favor and flush the pipes and see if, if your pipes are good enough. He calls me and he says, Paul, the pipe seat sounds to me it's good enough. But there is a little bit of a restriction. I said, oh my God, maybe the Indo unit. I didn't want to, I didn't want to blame him. So I said, maybe the Indo unit is pa partially blocked. Maybe there is some kind of a problem. Can you please check your joints? And guess what? He found that there was a kink. There was a kink on the 5-8 line. He kinked the 5-8 line. So please remember that on the manufacturing or manufacturer's point of view, we all have issues. But I'll tell you, we do have issues, but very, very minimum. So please, once again, when you're doing your job, make sure you have good pipes, you have good piping, never used before, kept in a secured place, because this piping can look good outside, but inside the insulation, is it's messed up. And especially if you're working with a team of two or three, you don't know what the other two guys did, how they handled those pipes. If you're working alone, then it's easy because you know, you know exactly what, what, the, the, what the condition of the pipe is. Burring. When you burn these, two, uh, these pipes, make sure you take all the crap out. Don't do it that way. Do it this way. You know that. And besides doing it that way, Flush it with nitrogen. Get rid of all the, all the chips out before connecting it. That's what I do all the time. Flaring. I know flaring is difficult. People don't like flaring. But it's not difficult, guys. If you, if you train yourself, keep training yourself every day when, uh, when you're not that busy. Keep training. Take 10 pieces of pipes every day. Flare. You'll be a champion. You'll be a pro. You will never have leads. 16 years and running. I have units installed. I installed them myself. 16 years and running. No issues. No gas. I'm talking about R22. No issues whatsoever. And I, and I became how? I became good because I was practicing every day and night. Just flaring, just flaring. That's it. So these are the few things, guys. These are the few things, guys. I'm, I know you know, but I'm just reminding you. I know, it's, I know sometimes it, it can sound boring, but it can cause problems. And if you are in one team, 
and if and in and for some reason your service team is not a big fan of you they can easily crush you from your weak points so please before they crush you make sure you do it right and when you do it right they don't have any 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 reason there is no reason for you to be blamed wiring this is the wire that i was talking to you about one two three and ground this wire runs between indoor and outdoor never join this wire please never if you have if you have no choice and there is a problem or something there is a pump a condensate pump and they're calling for some cut off what have you number one you can cut number one but never cut number two and number three you will always have nuisance calls and nuisance calls means really really nuisance and and another word for that is a, it, it it becomes very stubborn because you can you can find the problem because why because when you get to the site the unit is working now what if the unit is working are you going to find a problem no difficult so please keep that in mind guys never join these wires i had enough of issues i had enough of issues when guys joined these wires leak test pressurize the system 400 psi is more than enough guys vacuum the system below 300 on a small split system like this 15 feet piping go down below 300 and if you are living in a humid area vacuum it even for an hour just get rid of all the moisture inside the system you will never have issues in fact the longer the time you vacuum you will have uh, easy chances of catching if there is a leak because you will switch off the vacuum you will wait for a few minutes and see if the gauge is rising and when you are done before you turn on the unit pour some water these are simple things guys pour some water and see if if the water is pre-flowing or you or, or if the water is coming back inside the house not many people do the test for for delta t but in case you want to do it these are these are your values in cooling it's around eight degrees yeah eight degrees celsius which is which in 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 fahrenheit we are expecting to be around uh 14 degrees in in cooling and 25 degrees in heating between the between the indoor uh, sorry between the intake and exhaust so please keep those things in mind you will never have issues 130 to 150 170 is a bit high because the room is super super hot but when the room is stabilized around 130 is what you need to expect low pressure and and in heating anywhere from 350 to 4, 450 anywhere between 350 to 450 your system is working fine let's talk a little bit about service now service this is your pocket this is your indoor unit please make sure you open this indoor unit uh, this this screw over here lift this cover up and you can do your testing let's say you don't have access to the outdoor unit for whatever reason then you have access at the indoor unit you measure the voltages here you have a clear understanding of what's going on ensure this particular piece of cover is not missing why because it can give wrong information of air going inside and confusing the, the thermistors if for whatever reason you need to replace the blower wheel there is a screw on the right hand side attached to the blower uh, motor shaft remove that screw lift this coil slightly gently and pull that 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 uh, blow wheel out remember on the left hand side there is a bush there is a bush there and there is a there is like about two inch uh, shaft that goes into the bush some guys complain to me that uh, as soon as they turn the unit on the unit the, the the blow wheel was wobbling and we found out 
the shaft on the left hand side came off the bushing i complained that to the factory and they were they were thinking that it could have hap happened during shipping and handling so there are a few cases where you will find as soon as you turn the unit on the blower wheel is wobbling like crazy if that's the case just release this screw put back the bushing uh, the shaft on the left hand side into the bushing and you're good to go very rare but it can happen that's how the motor comes out in case you have to replace the motor down the road this motor has never failed honestly this motor has never failed i don't have a single motor here in my six and a half years with panasonic i don't have a single motor in my workshop here purging by external refrigerant is prohibited i saw this firsthand in a town in one town here out east a town called gander when when 9 11 uh, took place all the aircrafts were direct uh, directed to that city it's a small little town called gander in newfoundland there is this guy i went to visit his job site and i was i was lucky to be at one of his job sites that he was just uh, trying to commission and guess what he didn't have a vacuum pump can you believe that he didn't have a vacuum pump he flushed the line with the it, with the internal resist uh, refrigerant existing re refrigerant mind you you use that refrigerant you are low on gas i told him what are you doing man invest in a vacuum pump you're making all this money come on man so please hire a professional don't abuse your profession guys please do it right you will always have jobs do it neat you will have more and more jobs more and more jobs if you are working to get fast money oh boy it, it is a temporary uh, uh, a fantasy down the road you will always have problems how to check error code in my first slide under features i put this easy error code retrieving why because it is easy it is easy to talk to your homeowner for the homeowner to retrieve the error code give it to you you can call tech support so that you can start somewhere because it might be a two hour drive you want to pass to your supplier you want to you want to pass and get some parts maybe and how you do it it's super super easy when an error code happens the green light is not going to blink guys remember the yellow light which is the timer light will be blinking many guys they go for a false alarm they go to a job site and they tell me paul i have an alarm and what's the alarm the green light is blinking no the green light when it blinks it's in defrost mode so please remember to write this down when the green light blinks the unit is in defrost mode or standby mode in heat mode when the timer light blinks you have a problem there is an error code stored in that unit and to our to our good technology that we have there is only one error code stored and that's the latest error code so you are dealing with live current error code so please keep in mind the moment the homeowner, homeowner tells you the yellow color light is blinking and it's on the timer you can tell them okay let's do this together so that i can start somewhere and save you time and money so let's retrieve it how we do it okay take your remote controller face the indoor unit face that indoor unit press using a toothpick or a or a, a tiny sharp object and press the check button when you press the check button when you press the check button and hold it for a few seconds you will see the screen your remote controller 
screen disappears from all those digits and you will see a blank screen with two dashes two dashes and an h we have only two letters guys we have only two letters h as in henry and f as in frank these are the two letters along with the numbers that has the error codes for example h11 h12 f90 f99 f11 only two error codes so the moment the homeowner or yourself getting to this stage now you look for the timer up and down button you can use the either the upper or the lower and it's so easy you will scroll 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 until you hear the indoor unit starts to beep stop as soon as you hear that beep stop and look at your remote controller it will say it will give you an error code let's say h12 or h15 or h11 and if you're not sure if it, if that was the code you can scroll all the way and complete all the h error codes go next to the f error codes and come back to where it was beeping just to confirm and tell your and tell uh, your tech support or the homeowner tells you that it is indeed h11 or indeed h12 and guys you dealers you contractors you sales rep it's always advisable to download our app our app is super super friendly super super informative and anthony uh, campbell uh, or tony campbell uh, will post it on this uh, on this note here uh, the name of our app it's so easy download it right now right away from your device and it's so easy to use guys i'm using it all the time every time you guys call me it's panasonic ac service guide thank you felon thank you so please download it and you will be so happy about it and it's super easy Now for now for, for whatever reason your phone is dead, uh, you forgot to carry the service manual, you name it. Okay, we still have uh, you covered. We still have you covered, guys. At the side of the unit inside, they are all error code listed there. All the error codes are listed. And you can easily start somewhere. At least somewhere you can start. Maybe low refrigerant charge, or maybe communication wiring, or something wrong with the outdoor PCB, you name it. So you, you have the error code over there. You can, you can check it and take it from there. So we have you covered in all areas, in, in all directions. And again, our, our website, panasonic.com uh, is, 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 is password free. Okay, so please feel, get yourself comfortable, visit websites, visit service manuals, visit this app that uh, Tony and Fallon just posted. And you will tell me yourself, hey, Paul, this website is the best. I mean, this app is the best. Because I have seen other guys, I have seen other big other players, what their website, uh, what their apps are all about. Then, then when you're done with fixing that error code, don't just run away. Don't just put that money in your pocket and run away. Please erase that error so that if you have to come next time, you don't have to come back and look at that same error code if that same error code is there, sleeping there. Because sometimes guys, when they're called for maintenance, they tend to be too, too tacky and they go into the error code and they find things there and they start trying to fix it when there was nothing wrong with the unit. That error code was there, was already fixed, but the guy forgot to erase it. So please, when you fix the unit, get rid of that error code, please erase it. And it's so easy. Lift that cover, press and hold that button. You, you hear one beep, you hear one beep, take your remote controller, press the check button and leave it. Don't press and hold, just press once and leave it. You will hear another beep, confirm, error code is erased. If you wanna make sure that you erase the error code, you can go back into the, error history and check if your 
if you are really, really done with erasing the error code. So that picture there, you can see, is a picture of our Nano X WKUA remote controller. Over there at the bottom is your check button. This is your time up and down to scroll up and down when, when you are trying to retrieve the error code. And again, you will only see one error. The day you see two error, call me, I'll give you my two week paycheck. I know some guys are laughing here already. <laughs> there, is, there will be only one error code, guys. So, so that error code is what you're going to deal with. <laughs> Tony, I will take yours. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's move on. Here is a guy doing installation. He's making, he's making a hole going out. Make sure your drill, you're holding the drill, slanting it downwards. Okay, please make sure the drill is slanting it downwards. That way you have good slope, good gradient for your drain. Don't install your outdoor unit high in the sky. Please, please guys, think about your service guys. The service guys who are going to come there alone with little, little helper, with no helper and with little help. So please think about him. Bring that pipe all the way down and keep it a little bit high, your, your outdoor unit. So that way when the service guys come, he has no issues. He doesn't have to struggle and kill himself for no reason. So please think about the service part when you're installing the unit. You have your vacuum pump, your amprobe meter, and, and other meters here, humidity sensor uh, meters, whatever. Your gauges, don't mix your gauges, please. If you're working on various equipments with different, different refrigerants, please, as you know, don't, don't cut corners, please. Cut corners is not good. It's, it's a short time fix, long time trouble, long term problem. So please remember, use your gauges well, use your gauges correctly, you will never have issues. Speed level, very important, tape measure, crucial. Back plate, always keep it nice and firm. I'm just running through, through you slides, just reminding you, okay, once again, the drain. Always keep the drain well. <clears throat> Make sure the outdoor unit is well, well, well anchored. That way you don't have vibrations inside. Okay? Please keep that in mind. Always remember when you when, when you're installing a, a, multi, a single zone unit and you cross 25 feet, always give us a call if you're not sure. Always give us a call if you're not sure how much of refrigerant you need to add, how much, how much ounces you need to add. Don't place outdoor units like that. If you have a big project, don't place the outdoor units like that. It's not good. You're dumping heat or cold air on each other, causing problems, causing it to give you an error of as if the unit is low on refrigerant or too much of refrigerant, depending on which mode you are working on. Once again, wiring, never join these wires, please. Never join these wires between one, two, and three, between indoor and outdoor, communication line, communication wire, never join them, please. When I say joining, no matter what, no matter what item you use, no matter what component you use, Marait, or, or, or this terminal block, never use it. Please never use any kind of thing to join the wire. It's not allowed. Twist joint, please do not. One straight wire, please. I repeat, because I had enough of issues in the past. See, this is another result of why jo joining wires, they become weak and then they, and then they, and they overheat. This is one of the problem. Another problem is communication wiring, uh, co a communication error. It's not difficult, guys. These units are not difficult to install if you just obey the rules and regulation. Make sure it's nice and clean. Don't introduce any moisture. Don't in introduce any dirt from outside. 
Vendors, always use vendors. It's so important. Your job will look so good. So please keep in mind, use vendors, spring vendors, fixed vendors. Your job will look so neat. The customer will tell the neighbor, the neighbor will tell the neighbor and so forth. You don't have to advertise your company on radios and TVs all the time. I don't say don't advertise, you can advertise, but at the same time, word of mouth spreads faster. You see what happened here? The guy used his experience. He said, Paul, I'm 40 years experience in this trade, 30 years experience in this trade, and then see what happens now. It happened. I'm not making, I'm not making up stories. I'm making, I'm telling you stories that I'm getting from the job sites. So please keep in mind, use the proper rules, the proper regulations, the proper tools, refrigeration tools. Flaring tools, always oil them. Use nice oil, clean oil, so that you don't get cracks. Use, your, use refrigeration oil. Don't use too much, just a little bit to apply on the flaring tool so that you make a good flare. You will never have cracks, never. If you're brazing, I, I have yet to see, I mean, I have seen, but very rare people are using uh, brazing for residential because in most cases it's 20 feet, 30 feet, and your pipe comes 50 feet roll. So very rare I've seen people brazing, but if you have to braze, make sure you know what you're doing, and especially use nitrogen. You want to get rid of this item here. You see all these flakes? You see all this oxidize, oxidization that's happening inside because you're, you're, you're applying heat outside? Always run through nitrogen, 5, 10, 15 PSI, run through it so that you don't keep that crap there. Because I'll tell you, in our units, in the unit has got two to three screens or meshes, you know? Out the unit got about two, three, four, about five, six screens. They go inside, they get stuck. And then when they go and get stuck, what happens? Your pressures are all over the place. You have a contaminated system now. Guess who you know, who you are blaming? I know exactly who you will blame. And I will take the blame. But I'll tell you, I inspect these units when they come here and I find all these problems and I take pictures. Leak locks. Leak locks are not for our heat pumps. No matter which manufacturer you are listening to, leak, leak locks are not advisable because all our heat pumps have screens inside, unlike refrigeration equipment. Refrigeration equipment is okay. They tell you, use it, use it, no problem. Because their systems don't have screens inside. Tiny screens, you know? So please guys, don't use leak locks because you're not confident with your flaring. No, never use leak lock, period. Avoid moisture. I mentioned that to you earlier. When it's raining, when it's raining, no problem. Let it rain. But make sure the pipes are not left loose. Pipes are not left open. You'll always have issues, guys. Always you will have issues. Compressor is overheating like crazy. Because all the crap has gone in now. And the, comp and the compressor is struggling. It's just like the heart of a human being, you know. You've got to take care of your heart. Sometimes oily food is good. Sometimes oily food is not good. Uh oh, what's going on? Something happened here, guys? I'm still here. Okay. Sorry, I saw. Yeah, I'm answering his question now. 
Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no worries. Pipe wrench. Okay, adjustable, adjustable wrenches. Use it, but use it to an extent. Don't over tighten, guys. Don't over tighten. I've seen guys are tightening so much that the indoor unit flare nut is cracking. I've seen it with my own eyes. There's a leak, and and the system is low on refrigerant. And when I find a leak, guess where the leak is? At the indoor unit flare nut. The guy has over tightened it and it has cracked. So please use this tool. I know it's expensive, but it's going to save you money. <clears throat> It's going to pay your money back and so, more and more. So presentation went down. It went down? Yeah. I know that hasn't happened. How about now? You see anything? No, I don't see it. I just I still see your screen. I just don't see your presentation. Okay, so let me share. Maybe hit yeah, okay. All right, I see the presentation up, just presentation mode. Now? Uh, display settings, just switch it. Okay. Perfect, okay, sorry about that everyone, thank you. Okay guys, sorry about that. So I was talking about this tool, talk range, use it. Okay guys? So please keep in mind, torque range is, is our tool. It's not only tools for tightening uh, tires or wheels, bolts and nuts. It's even our tool. We need it for our, our use. That's why in the manual, that's why in the installation manual, it talks about newtons per meter square, newtons per meters, foot pounds, because you need to tighten based on that. Quarter inch, you know, uh, five eight uh, over here. You see, they list this. They list this newtons per meter, and then in some in some manuals, foot pounds. We need we need to use this. If we don't use this, we have trouble. Sixteen years and running. I'm not kidding. Sixteen years and running. Sixteen years and running. I have installed units and no leaks no leaks whatsoever because i used always this tool i have 30 plus experience in this trade but but yet i'm using the tool the tools because i know the tools are better than me and i trust these tools so please guys use the tools why why only you are using gauges and an amp meter because you, you can't see the running ends with your experience and because you can't see the pressures with your experience, obviously, yes. So the same thing, you don't know how much you're tightening. So I keep stressing this because I have issues and I have problems in the field of leaking, of leakages. And when a leak happens, a lot of problems can happen re related to that leak. Oil got lost out of that compressor. Some of the oil escaped. Now the unit is running well. It's pumping a lot of uh, heat. It's giving you good uh, cooling uh, effect, good heating effect. Customer is happy. But how long is that compressor going to last? Because now it has lost some of its liquid. I mean, uh, oil. Moisture. We have we have regions with high moisture throughout the year, and especially in the winter, when the temperature drops and drops and drops, there are some regions the humidity goes up. The place where I live, when the temperature drops, the humidity drops. But there are other regions when the temperature drops, the humidity goes up. So keep in mind, you need to increase your time for vacuuming. Sometimes even when you see your gauges are reading below 300. Just give, just give it a more, uh, more, more minutes. There's no harm. The longer, while you're doing your, your disconnect, while you're, use, you're doing your wiring, while you're doing your, you know, your cosmetics, like blocking the holes, making it look neat, whatever. You have a lot of things to do when the system is on vacuuming.
pressure test. Pressure test your system. You know, 540 is wrong. This was for a commercial, a commercial job. So 540 is too much because our small units cannot handle 540. The, the, inner, the inner valves may open. 400 is more than enough, guys. Just go for 400 and you're good. Gas leak, soap solution, electronic leak detector. I use that electronic leak detector as well as manual soap solution. I use both just to make sure that the electronic leak detector is not picking up some, some polluted air, whatever. I don't know. Then you check the performance when the unit is running. Don't just pack up and run. Make sure it's running well. And if you're installing a unit in summertime where it's super, super hot, high humidity, at least make sure the drain is coming out and then you leave. It doesn't take long. Less than half an hour, you'll start getting uh, condensate out if you're living in a humid area. So these are the things I just keep reminding, guys, so that you don't forget, so that you don't ignore. 350 to 425, even 450 is not bad, depending on, depending on situation. 125 to 140 in cooling, that's good. Okay, weighing scale. Always remember when you have a leak, recover whatever is left, revacuum, fix the leak, revacuum, and recharge by weighing it in. Always remember our systems need to be weighed in. Never use superheat or subcooling uh, values. We are charging by the weight. So please remember to roam with the weighing scale all the time, every time. These are a few pictures that I would like to share. This picture here, the unit was low on gas. So when the defrost was taking place, there was not enough of hot gas. There was no enough of hot gas to melt the entire coil. So all the coil at the, back, at the bottom was getting frozen. And mind you, this unit has a drain fan heater, but it doesn't help that much when you have lack of, when a system is low on gas. This system was not low on gas. This system, the defrost sensor was out of the well. So the unit was not calling for defrost. Because remember, our coil, our defrost cycle depends on two things, temperature and time. Every hour, we, we will get one defrost uh, cycle when the temperature is around zero degrees and below, or 32 degrees Fahrenheit and below. So it's not only time, but also temperature. So when, when this unit did not see temperature, it, it kept going. And probably the sensor was in a warm spot, maybe next to the compressor. I don't know, but it sounds like it was in a warm spot. So it never, it never called for defrost. So I told the guy, just open up the unit, tow, tow the entire coil and see if, they, if, if, if the sensor was out. And right enough, it was out, out of the well. I honestly don't know how it came out. Maybe shaking, maybe transportation. Maybe the guy at, at the factory forgot to put it in uh, while testing it. It's possible. I cannot blame the installer all the time. I have to take the blame as well. The two-way situation. This is outside my office. On the top picture, this is outside my, la my test lab, by the way. So outside the picture, uh, sorry, the top picture there is when the snow, snow was falling. Sometimes it goes way above, like this. So you should tell your homeowner, you should tell your homeowner, if you are living in a, in a cold area, snowy area, green belt, tell them to get rid of that snow for better performance. It's just like, like their driveway. Treat the unit just like your driveway. You need to clear snow in 24 hours as per the, 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 the municipal code. Do the same thing with the unit. Trust me, you'll get good performance. Because this snow on top here gets frozen and just makes the coil feel cold. And next thing, every hour the unit goes into defrost because the coil is so cold. That's the inside of the unit. That's a 24,000 BTU. On the right hand side is your PCB day, top right compressor and your fan to access this you got to open up the front cover 
have a look at it, do whatever you want. If you want to test it, no problem, test it, but make sure you close the top cover so that you don't get high pressure. That's the PCB. They sprayed uh, waterproof, waterproof insula insulation. But one spot they kept it open is for testing, for pumping down. If you short those two pins, when you short those two pins and you leave it there, the unit goes into defrost cycle. Uh, sorry, into pump down mode. So that way, it's another good test to see if your outdoor unit is working. Because if the outdoor unit goes into pump down, that means the compressor is good and it's working. So let's say you have a problem that you don't know if it's the indoor unit problem or the outdoor, if why the indoor unit is not running or the outdoor unit is not running, that is a good test. Take your alligator clips, jump them, turn the unit on. After three minutes, if the unit goes into defrost site, uh, sorry, into pump down, you know your outdoor unit is in good shape. All right. So that brings us to the end, to the end of our single zone. That brings us to the end of our single zone. Now we will be talking about our multi zone, guys. So let's talk about our multi zone. And uh, uh, hold on. So let's talk about our multi zone, guys. And uh, display setting. Okay. Hope everything is nice and clear. So let's talk now perfect. about our multi zone. That's good. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So just keep in mind, we finished our, our single zones. We never spoke about error codes. Okay, guys. Why? Because our multi zone error codes that, that I'm going to talk about also relates and also are the same error codes on our single zone. When I talk about H11 on a multi zone, it's the same H11 that applies to single zone. So I didn't want to repeat. Okay. So we will talk about this in a later, in a, in a, in a few minutes ahead of the slides. Uh, we'll talk about uh, how to fix these error codes and stuff like that. So the, so the multi zone, the multi zone that I picked up is our five zone. Okay, guys. So please keep in mind that whether it's a two zone, a three zone, a four zone, or a five zone, it's the same application. Just keep in mind, okay? Just keep in mind that all our multi zones, minimum of two indoor units needs to be installed, okay? Something is loading, so please be, please bear with me. It's taking a bit slow. <clears throat> oh God. Is everything okay? It finally loaded. We see the first line. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. So, so this TU 5E 36 QBU 5 is our five zone, five as in five over here. If it was a three zone, you would see three, and our three zone is a 19,000 BTU. If it was a four zone, you would see a four. That's how our nomenclature works. And you would see a 24,000 because our four zone is 24,000. And if it was a two zone, you would see a two and 18,000. Our two zone is 18,000 BTU, guys. That's our unit. That's how our unit looks like. And once again, once again, I repeat that a minimum of two indoor units needs to be installed in our multi zone. However, you need to respect the minimum and maximum capacity. When you look at our five zone over here, 4.5 stands for minimum and 17.5 kilowatts stands for maximum. Hold on, guys. I will do a conversion uh, in the next few, few seconds. So, so when you look here, 
what what is the conversion one kilowatt is equal to 34 12 btu per hour so again when the guy picked up two seven thousand btus on this 36 thousand he was still under minimum capacity which means if he turns the unit on he's going to get a capacity error now you are now you are shocked what happened oh paul told me to put two un into units so i'm putting two in the units or oh, you forgot that i also mentioned that you need to respect the minimum and maximum so please keep in mind that no matter what we tell you you have to make sure you cover all areas and once again if you're not sure and it happens all the time over here please call tony or call your tech support line wherever you are he will help you out it's better to make a phone call ahead than making a mistake because you know once these things are connected powered and you and and gas released now you are you, now you have a problem so please remember i don't expect you to remember all these things sometimes it's too much for us to to absorb all this info that's why myself i attend one two three times even four times a year training on one particular product because i cannot absorb everything today and when i ex when, uh, when i attend next my next session whatever i do not absorb i will absorb so 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 finally well well equipped so keep in mind guys not only two indoor units but also minimum and maximum capacity so that's our five and seven 9,000, 12, 18, and 24. So please keep in mind that you size these units correctly. You don't want to put too much of pressure on that 36,000 BTU. Okay, so please keep in mind you size these units correctly. Now, let's talk about these nuts here. These are not only nuts, but they are adapters. <coughs> these adapters are very important. Over the weekend, a guy installed a unit. He installed this unit here. 24, 000, sorry, he installed 18,000. He installed two 18,000 BTUs on a 36,000 outdoor unit. Okay? He wanted capacity, so he installed two 18,000. Okay? Guess what he did? He ran half inch pipe from the indoor unit all the way to the outdoor unit that is not our style guys that is not panasonic style mitsubishi and other products you run the indoor unit size to the outdoor unit but with panasonic no you run three eighths and quarter you run three eighths and quarter all the way to the indoor unit and when you get there you will you will select the type of adapter you need from three eighths to half inch the only one that has an exceptional is the 24,000, and that also has an explanation for the 24,000, you will run half inch from the outdoor to the indoor suction line okay Obviously, liquid line remains the same, quarter, 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 quarter. But for the for the 24,000, you will run half inch from the indoor to the outdoor. At the outdoor, you will reduce it using one of these adapters to three eighths. And at the at the indoor unit, you will re, uh, you will upsize it or increase it to five eighths because the indoor unit takes five eighths and quarter. We have been very successful with three eighths and quarter inch for compressor durability. And it has and it has proved for more than 10 years. We have no issues. Perfect oil return. And guess what? You're not spending much money on piping. Only three eighths and quarter, guys. So you're all you're win-win. You're winning all the time. You don't want to run five eighths and half inch. So the guy who installed 18,000 BTU 
what I told him is to add a little bit of refrigerant to to cover up the the diameter of the pipe because because of the diameter of the pipe and the length that he went was enough to show the outer unit was low on refrigerant was lacking some refrigerant so please he got away with this but i don't know how how long it's going to last but i i mentioned to him at some point you will have to rectify this issue now whether he's going to re rectify it or not i don't know but i've kept a note just in case the compressor fails at some point so far it's been running fine customer is happy everybody's happy but please don't do that mistake and once again you may remember what i spoke about this casually you may remember casually but you may not remember everything so please give us a call give tony a call ask him what were you talking about this and that and that and we will help you out then height difference everybody knows height difference is a is a biggest enemy for compressors when it comes to oil return so just don't put the unit in the sky and hope for the best read the the the, the, the existing uh, uh installation manual that came with the unit what i put here is for uh, for, for 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 training purpose I, I may be right on the 24 feet, 49 feet, and 10 to 82 feet, and, 20, and 262 feet maximum pipe or whatever. But sometimes I, I could be, I could be wrong on this, on this 147.6 feet. Why? Because it depends on the model. Five zone, it is charged 447, but three, four, and two zones are charged differently. Okay. So please keep in mind that your unit is only charged for so much and it is charged only for so much length when you exceed that length you need to add some units will call for 0.22 ounces some some units may call for 0.33 ounces so please keep in mind that there is a manual inside it talks about everything it tells you everything okay guys and and there's always there is always a difference between when the unit is up, when the unit is down, when the unit is in the, in the middle. But I'll tell you, from my experience, my installation experience, service experience, always when the outer unit was in a balanced spot, like I know, like I understand, guys, sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes there is no room. Sometimes there is no place to put that outer unit. But always make the best judgment the best judgment of your life to put that outdoor unit because remember that outdoor unit is the heart is the heart of that system so so if you place that outdoor unit in an average spot an average spot where it serves each and every indoor unit at an average pipe length you will never have issues down the road not that you have issues if you place it otherwise but Remember, if your body is, is, is designed to run uh, seven kilometers a day, okay? If your body is designed to run 14 miles a day, when you reach 50 years, you have to reduce. You don't have to run for 14 miles a day. You're gonna hurt your knees, my friend. I've been running, I've been running every morning and evening all my life. But of late, I'm, a, I'm approaching 50 now, of late my knees are giving trouble that's because of high mileage same thing with the system the system also goes through high mileage so if you want to protect your system if you want to protect your knees don't stress them too much okay i hope you i hope you know what i'm talking about it's not difficult guys it's not difficult so this is my best this is my best uh, application. I like this application because e all in the units are, are in equal length. They're getting good pumping capacity, no problem. This drawing here is too small, but basically what it means, it's, it's showing us we have five indoor units. Each indoor unit, 
are connected correctly and don't do not cross the lines do not cross the wires we have sensors we have sensors on each liquid and gas lines so when one line is freezing for whatever reason it's going to pop up you're going to get an error that the sensor is defective but don't judge on that sensor you might be having a mechanical issue which is what which is refrigerant or cross piping cross piping is very common cross wiring is very common in our multi zones trust me till tomorrow till tomorrow i have calls of cross wiring people are in a rush people are in a hurry people get distracted and i don't blame them so please a to a b to b c to c d to d e to e don't cross those pipes don't cross those wiring if you have if you have to pick up a phone call while you're doing that connection you can wait if that if that phone call can wait let it wait do your job do it correctly you have no issues that's your discharge temperature sensor it's above your compressor that that sensor will act up when you have low refrigerant why because the the compressor is getting hot no cold refrigerant is coming back to the compressor That's your wiring, A to A, B to B, C to C. You will never have issues. You will never have issues. So please keep that in mind. Multi-zones, the only calls I get, guys, so far is cross-piping, I mean cross-wiring. Our manual, our app has all this, all this information, <coughs> excuse me, all this information that I'm talking about, it's all on our app. And, and trust me, trust me, I have not received a single sensor defective. But that doesn't mean that in your case, you may not have a defective sensor. You may have a defective sensor, but I'll tell you, the guys who replaced sensors came back to me and told me I have the same problem again. It's very rare. These sensors are strong and very rare they go bad. So you could be those unlucky ones and have a defective sensor, okay? I'm not saying you don't have. You may have. You may, you may be one of those unlucky guys. Compressor. Paul, why are you telling me the compressor is bad when I'm, I'm reading uv vw whatever all the same because the compressor is stuck mechanically stuck so what happens is every three minutes compressor starts stop start stop start stop but the fan keeps running the caps the fan keeps keeps running that means the compressor is dead compressor is stuck and guess what one or two cases i had compressors came here there was no oil inside so what's going to happen with the next compressor same story. You have to make sure there is no pipe traps. P traps, U traps, not allowed. No intentional traps, guys. Number one. Number two, always remember to add refrigerant. Always remember to add refrigerant when you cross the limit of charging, the limit of the factory charge. When you cross it, remember to add refrigerant. Please. You will have no issues with these compressors. That picture there is of a, of a four zone. Oh, that terminal block here is your live in and ground. Zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four. It's a four zone, but we're talking obviously a five zone. So if there was a five zone, you would see another terminal block here. Okay, so A, B, C, D, E. That's your service PCB. That PCB, you will see it only on multi-zone, guys. You can do so many things. You can do so many things with that PCB, but I will only explain to you what to use it for. 
Not everything, but only what is important. So what it has, guys, that service PCB has got a pump down option. So you can do pump down even if the homeowner is not at home. As long as there is power to the outdoor unit, you can perform pump down while you're waiting for the homeowner to come home. And then once you collect all the refrigerant, you know what is your next move. By then the homeowner is at home. Now you can you have saved a lot of time. So you can do pump down from the outside unit. Basically, what you what you do, you press and hold that button for five seconds, the unit starts pump down. It will go from anywhere from five minutes to 15 minutes, depending on the pipeline. The compressor is going to run at a fixed frequency. All expansion valves are fully open. And mind you, they are all in cool mode. So no matter what mode the unit is at, no matter what mode the unit is at, the moment you pr press that pump down button, you are in cool mode and fixed frequency. Then make sure you close the, 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 you close the liquid line, pump down will, will start uh, taking place. Your pressures will start dropping, 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 dropping. And as it's, and it's dropping, these lights will start flashing. They mean something. These lights, when they start flashing, they mean something. For example, when these three lights are flashing, it means three minutes remaining. Two lights flashing, two minutes, one minute, and boom, done. So you're going to be very quick, guys. You're going to be super, super fast to shut down the liquid line, uh, sorry, the gas line. And maybe you made a mistake or you wanted, to, you wanted to test if this pump down switch is working or not, you can always cancel it by pressing that button again. So pump down, go ahead, use it as and, as and when you need it, okay? Then test run. Test run, please do not use it when you're running the system for the first time. You can use test run for, for troubleshooting purpose. Because when you are called for a, to a job site where uh, the homeowner says, oh, there's no much heat, oh, it's not cooling well and all that stuff, you want to drive that compressor to the maximum so that you can see if your pressures are good, your running amps is good, and no lack of refrigerant or blockages or whatever. So you can use that test run for, for maintenance purpose, for service purpose. But please do not use test run for commissioning purpose. I have seen guys using test run and all units run wild, no problem. They get, out, they get out of test run, they run, they they leave the job site. Next day they get a phone call, oh, one unit is flashing, or the system is down, go to see they had cross wiring. So test run is good, use it, but don't use it for commissioning purpose. You will, you will test one unit at a time, only one unit at a time when you're doing commissioning so that you can confirm that each and every unit is performing well and not that it has got crossed wire. The wires have been crossed A to B, B to C, C to whatever. So test run, if you're doing cooling, if you're doing test run cooling, you press that for five seconds, and the second light LED is going to come on. When that second LED comes on, you are in test run, leave your finger. If you want to, if you want to uh, uh, cancel it, you can press that switch again. No problem. If you want heat test run, heat mode test run, you keep pressing it longer, longer than five seconds, maybe around 10 seconds. And what will happen is the, the first light will come on, the second light will come on, the second light will go off, and the third light will come on. Now you are in heat mode, leave your finger right away. After a few minutes, maybe one to three minutes, the unit will start running. And when the unit starts to run, it will run at a lower, lower frequency, and it will, and it will creep up, up and up and up. And after five, five minutes, maybe, maybe, maybe maximum five minutes, the compressor will be running at a fixed frequency. You can do all your tests, pressures, running amps, you name it. 
You can do so many things with test run. And I use it all the time when I have a service call. When I have a maintenance call, I tell a guy, put it in test run and let's measure the running amps. If the, if, if the running amps does not make sense, then I'll tell him, okay, throw in your gauges. Because I'm the last guy to hook up gauges when I'm troubleshooting this system. And you know why? I run away with few ounces sometimes. And those, those ounces are so critical, are so crucial. You don't want to run away with few ounces. Again, you can cancel any time by canceling that button number two. Wiring chart, don't use this. It's there. You can read about it, but please do not use it because I had issues with this uh, feature. The guy crossed, crossed just one unit and this wiring uh, procedure can rectify that. But when, they, when the system has no power for more than 48 to 72 hours, that error code can come back. So please don't use the wiring check option. The best option to test whether you did your, your wiring correctly is to perform one unit at a time. Test indoor unit cooling for five minutes, switch it off, go to the next, do the same thing, one unit at a time. Either cooling or heating, it doesn't matter. So we will skip this, but again, if you wanna, if you wanna read about this, it's in our service manual, it's there. It's, it's, it's a good feature, but I don't like to use it because I have trouble with guys in the field. Okay. Power save. Power save button is there just to reduce the noise. It will reduce the noise uh, quite, quite a bit. And uh, at the same time, by reducing the noise, you're saving power. For example, you're saving two amps. If, if the system was supposed to run at 20, it's gonna run at 18. So you're saving two amps, two amps for a period of one week or, or one month or, or one year is a lot of money. It's a lot of, it's a lot of units on your hydro, but at the same time, you're compromising on capacity. So that's, that's, the, that's the negative side of this power save issue. So you can use that, but keep in mind, you're compromising on uh, capacity. Priority mode, it's a good feature, very, very few people, maybe maybe nobody is using, but it's there. And what it does, it gives priority to of the operation mode to the indoor unit with the highest capacity. So what that, that means, in, in, in this five zone, if there is a unit of 18,000 being the highest capacity, and if it's in the manager's office, and the manager walks in, and, the, and that manager wants cooling only, or cool mode, then even if the system was in heat mode, that unit can change its mode from heat to cool. Only if the priority mode button was flipped. Okay? Only if this priority mode bo uh, uh, button was flipped, SW5. But in most cases, I've, I've not seen as yet, but there are, probably there are guys who are doing that. But again, if you don't need to, don't, there is no need. If all units are in cooling, let them be all in cooling. And then there is a call mostly in Vancouver, BC. They asked Paul, I don't, I don't want this heat pump to run it in heating. I just bought this heat pump for cooling only. I said, no problem. There is a jump outside, chop it off. For single zones, you go in a remote controller and, and disable heat mode. So we, we don't need to remove a four-way valve coil, we don't need to remove four-way valve plug and you name it. Just cut this jumper and you're good. You're in cool mode only. And, it, and, and, and if they want their heat pump back, resolder that and you're good and up and running. Okay, let's talk about error codes, guys. Now, H11, as I told you earlier, H11 applies to both, single and multi. H11 is very common. Very common for new installations and also common for old installations. 
For new installation, H11, 99.9% cross wiring. 99.9% based on the calls that I received on a brand new installation is wiring, cross wired. The guy will swear on all his gods, on all his beliefs, whoever he believes in, and says, Paul, no, I do not cross my wire. And guess what? He crossed the wire. And we move on life. No problem. It's okay. I understand. It, 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 it happens. Let's move on. And for newness that has been running for a while, H11, 99.7% is the outdoor unit. Outdoor unit problem. It could be the electronic expansion valve coil damage. It could be the outdoor pen or it could be the inverter PCB itself. Those three items can cause H11 because it cuts off power to the communication line. And that's where you have this problem. So that's about H11. And when you go to our app, all these pictures you see, all these slides you see, it's pulled out from that app, guys. And it's so easy, so easy how to tackle this H11. All you do on the communication line, between the remove, remove the, the, the number three wire, measure between two and three on the terminal block. And when you see the, 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 the voltage DC fluctuating, you know your outdoor PCB is in good shape. It's the indoor PCB that is defective. So when you compare with other manufacturers, our H11, our communication error, to find out where the problem is, we are the easiest, I can tell you, in the industry. And I'm telling you, not because I feel like telling you, I'm telling you based on my experience, based on my field experience. Then we have the H12. H12 is unmatched, uh, unmatched indoor unit. I told you about the, 12, uh, the two indoor units that you need to put. If you put two indoor units and you're still with, uh, lower than the capacity, you will get this H12. Very rare, but it can happen. H15 is the compressor temperature sensor. When the compressor sensor is overheating, sorry, when the compressor discharge pipe is overheating, that's where you have this problem. Lower refrigerant or the sensor itself, but which is very rare, but it can happen and, and, and other pro probabilities or possibilities. So please guys, if you're working on Panasonic units day in, day out, or even on a single day in a week or whatever, in a month, doesn't matter. Please, please download that app. That app will save you a lot of time, a lot of headaches, because sometimes you may forget to call which number. You don't know which number to call. So that app is going to help you a lot. H16, I had a few phone calls uh, over the past six years, and it was the compressor discharging. I mean, pumping, pumping ratio, very poor pumping ratio. Most of those units over 10 years, we, we one or two units we had an H16 and guess what the compressor was replaced and everything was up and running. So please remember H16, don't replace PCBs, or what have you. It's mostly designed for the pumping ratio of the compressor. Outdoor sensor, outdoor sensor H27, very rare, but remember it can happen. And if it and if it happens, make sure you check if it was a snowy day. Sometimes the snow can get go, it can go and get stuck there and give all false reading to the EEPROM. And the EEPROM drives that compressor crazy for no reason and, and the system shuts down. So please check all the elements. Check, make sure everything is clean. Go with your multimeter. Multimeter is the best, not an amp probe. Because in most cases, our amp probes are not calibrated for sensor, thermistor readings, measurements. Use a multimeter. Most of the time, guys will call me and tell me, oh, I, it's reading OL, OL, OL. I, I ask him, are you using an amp probe? He says, yes. I said, use, use a multimeter. Most of the time, they have a multimeter as well. And when they measure the multimeter, everything is perfect, everything is reading good. H28, very rare, never happened, but it, you never know. In your case, it can happen. You never know. So please keep that in mind. All the error codes, again, are available in a service manual or on the app. 
and the sensor is very easy to measure because you just use this graph outdoor temperature against the resistance outdoor temperature against resistance kilo ohms most of our sensors if not all are rated in kilo ohms h33 one call so far and it was low voltage they supplied 120 volts instead of 208 to 30 volts it was a 208 to 30 unit and they supplied 115 volts because the electrician said ah this is a small little unit 9000 it must be using 115. he didn't look at the nameplate so h33 was that h36 very rare but it can happen so i will talk about the error codes that are very common and and easy to fix h97 super common and very common when winter kicks in when winter kicks in snowy condition h97 snow got packed inside the unit and the and the pen blade is struggling because it got frozen quickly the ice the snow and now we have ice in the unit and nobody cleaned it and we have this problem so clean it everything is good the pen is nice and free h97 is gone h98 is a hidden error it's a it's an error uh, mostly uh, uh, I would say a protection error. It's a protection error in heat mode when out of five indoor units, let's say you have five indoor units on a, on a multi-zone and all four are off and only one is running. So one is running, the capacity, sorry, the surface area becomes too small for that outdoor unit. So as you know, in heat mode, the indoor unit becomes the condenser. So it's building up high pressure and it trips on H98. H98. But that H98 will not stop the unit completely. It will, it will start again and it will run. So if the system is running, no problem. There could be a H98 hidden error. If the system shut down and it's flashing and you retrieve the error code in H98, definitely you have a dirty coil. You have a dirty coil for sure. Clogged filter, clogged uh, blower wheel, you name it. But very rare. So far, the H98 that I received is because guy is using one unit out of the five, which is okay. And also, it's not shutting down the entire system. It just, it's, it's just a protection error. Then H99 is another common error. Very common during dry mode condition. Guys are using, so this H99 should never happen in heat mode, okay? It's a cool mode or a dry mode error. So what happens is the coil gets so cold below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, below 34 degrees Fahrenheit, and the system will shut down once, twice, thrice. If it shuts down four times in one hour, the system is going to shut down on H99. Two possibilities, low on refrigerant, clog the, clog the, clog the, clogged filter. So there are two possibilities for H99. Clogged filter or low on refrigerant. There is one which also plays a role is the dry mode function. So guys, when you're using dry, dry mode function, please advise the homeowner when, the, when, when, when there is no enough of humidity, let's say lower than 75% humidity, dry mode can, can trip the system overnight in on h99 the system might, might shut down overnight on h99 because there is no enough of humidity to take care of the coil the indoor coil so that's another thing we need enough of humidity to run the system in dry mode and enough of humidity meaning above 75 degrees sorry above 75 percent F11, four-way valve, or indoor sensor. On very old systems, like 10 years and above, once in a while I get F11. And when I change the indoor sensors, up and running, no problem. And, and if it's a new system, maybe the four-way valve is not uh, plugged in. Due to transportation, whatever, the four-way valve plug came out. Very rare, but it can happen. 
So please keep that in mind. F17, cross wire or cross piping. SF17 is the only error that you will see. Oh, sorry, two errors. There are two error codes, H39 and F17. These are the two error codes you will not see in a single zone. Why? Because this explains about a unit freezing standalone. When a unit is freezing standalone, that, that is because they cross the wire. So please keep in mind, F17 and H39 are two error codes related to cross wiring. It talks about electronic expansion valve because it seems, it, it, it thinks that definitely you have not crossed the wires. But based on my experience, based on my experience, guys, for F17 and again H39 has always been caused by cross wiring. F90 is not a good error, but if it happens, it's the outdoor PCB. Very rare, it's the compressor. Very, very rare. F90 is definitely the outdoor PCB problem. F91, 99.9% there is a leak. There is a shortage of refrigerant shutting down the system, and you have this F91. And these are the pictures. These are the three pictures from the three different sites that tells us the system shut down on F91. You see this? Never ever think that the problem was defrost cycle. The problem was not defrost cycle. The problem was the system had low refrigerant. The defrost cycle took place and it could not uh, melt all that ice, all that snow, all that frost. So F, uh, sorry, F91 is the error code. F93 is kinked pipe or compressor defect. So why I said kink pipe is because we had one case, a place called Newfoundland, St. John's Newfoundland, and they had this F93. So, so because it was a new installation, I didn't want to waste their time. I gave them a new unit. And guess what? The new unit, same problem. I told him, Neil, please check your connections. And the guy was so faithful, so honest, and very humble. He sent me pictures, and those pictures showed exactly what happened. While tightening the indoor flare nuts, on the indoor side, the pipe got slightly kinked and tripping on HF93 in heat mode. F94 is it's there, but very rare, and it can happen. F96, definitely it's the outdoor PCB, but again, it could be either the outdoor PCB or the compressor. That's why we tell guys to invest in something called uh, inver inver inverter phase checker. I may have a video I will show you later. It's it's such a such a tool that it's really really helpful. You can buy it from any store. Everybody sells it, and all suppliers they sell it. It's called an inverter phase checker. I will I will show you a video of how it looks like. F97, it's there, but very rare, but it can happen. F98, again, very rare, but it can happen. Maybe compressor, or maybe the outdoor fan, or maybe the PCB. F99. Once I had this problem once or twice, like if I can remember, and, and basically nothing was wrong. They just shut the power off for, for 10, 15 minutes. Again, please, when you have an F error code, reset the power for 10, 15 minutes and try it. Not six, not seven, but 10 to 15 minutes. But F91, it's definitely a, a, a leak in the system. Besides the F91, all the F error codes, wait for 10 to 15 minutes and then try it again. So guys, that brings us to the end of our two segments, which is the the uh, which is which is the single zone and multi zone. I want to see if I have this video uh, so that I can share. Uh, let me see. 
if I have it. Can everybody see the video? It has to be quickly plotted, right? not so big. Can you see the video? Yes, no? Uh, yes, the video is there. Okay, guys, this thing is called an inverter check, inverter checker. So what it does, you plug it into, into, the, into the PCB or into the compressor, uh, the wires that go to the compressor, you plug it here. When you plug it there, you will find out that if all the six lights come on, all the six lights come on, that means the outdoor PCB is good. And you can perform this in two minutes, less than two minutes. You can find out if the inverter PCB or the compressor is defective. So if you get all the six lights come on, that means your inverter PCB is good, the compressor is seized. So if, if you don't mind, if you can invest in this tool, it's not even expensive, but it's so much time. I mean, it saves you a lot of time. Because I know most of you guys don't do heat pumps day in, day out. If you are doing heat pumps day in, day out, maybe you may tell me I don't need this tool. I have a trick behind that. And that's good for you. <laughs>